Here's a uh, news article I'd like to uh, share with you guys. Um, it's from the National Law Review, and it's dated July 5th, 2018. And I'd like to speak to it. Um, so it's called the FDA Commissioner Dr. Scott Gottlieb's recent remarks on vapor products and the continuum of risk update on deeming rule appeal. And so it says, on June 18, 2018, a U.S. Food and Drug Administration Commissioner, Dr. Scott Gottlieb, delivered a remarks on FDA's nicotine and tobacco regulation and the key role of regulatory science at the Tobacco Regulatory Science Program meeting. While addressing the importance of regulatory science to inform FDA's Center for Tobacco Products regulatory efforts, Commissioner Gottlieb focused a portion of his remarks on the use of electronic nicotine delivery systems as smoking cessation tools and FDA's role in their regulation. According to Commissioner Gottlieb, Utilizing scientific evidence and supporting new research to inform tobacco regulatory actions that protect public health is one of the primary missions of FDA CTP. Utilizing regulatory science to better understand e-cigarettes, Commissioner Gottlieb confirmed again that not all tobacco products are equally harmful, but that a continuum of risks exists stating we believe in the concept of a con continuum of risk related to tobacco products and, and we believe there is a role for modified risk products. Further, we want to preserve e-cigs as one among a number of possible options for adult smokers and believe that fully transitioning smokers to ends can reduce the morbidity and mortality associated with tobacco use. Pause that one second. Further goes on to say that Commissioner Gottlieb noted potentially less harmful products, including the wide diversity of ends and other novel tobacco products, must be put through an appropriate series of regulatory gates to fully evaluate the risks and maximize their potential benefits. It was on to say the commissioner's praise of vapor products as a potential reduced harm alternative for smokers, however, apparently does not apply to adolescents, for whom FDA maintains there is never a good reason to use any tobacco product, reduced harm or not. A position that has been criticized in some public health circles. Now, so as I was, we were talking about on the live show on Monday. Uh, Bruce and myself, <clears throat> we both agree that FDA Commissioner Scott Gottlieb is including uh, uh, electronic cigarettes or vapor products uh, as a less alternative, um, uh, I should say this, as an alternative to um, or less harmful product as opposed to uh, combusted cigarettes. And uh, therefore, um, he's going to tiptoe around the federal laws that are um, on the books to try to uh, help out the vaping industry community to keep these products on the market. Um, well, hopefully, <clears throat> Gottlieb remains in that position so we don't get somebody in, a, in, a, in that position that will take a different stance. <clears throat> so it's good. I mean, the, Gottlieb is open-minded, and he acknowledges the, not only the potential, but also understands the current real data in regards to vapor products, that it's a better alternative um, than combusted cigarettes and other products on the market. He probably even considers vapor products even better than heat not burn technology, but who knows? I'm just I'm sort of guessing on that, but but anyway, um 
So we'll see what happens. You know, at least he's open-minded enough to uh, say, hey, you know, as uh, long as it stays out of the hands of the youth, uh, those under the age of 18, in other words, you know, in other words, if you really understand Gottlieb, it, it, uh, as long as they're vapor products, e-liquids, hardware, stay out of the hands of the adolescents or the um, those under the age of 18, then I'll have no problem permitting or allowing vapor products to remain on the market. Regardless if they have a manufactured finished product date after August 8, 2016, he's going to be pretty much hands off. So that's pretty good. And at the end here, they talk about the Nicopure Labs case. And they give us dates here. And let's see one second. Let me find this. Let me find this date one second. So it says here, it says all arguments in the deeming rule appeal, the meaning of the Nickel Pure Labs right to be smoke free coalitions appeal. Oral arguments on the deeming rule appeal have been scheduled for September 11th, 2018, before the U.S. Court of Appeals for the D.C. Circuit. <clears throat> now, the great thing about a U.S. Court of Appeals, um, and it doesn't have to be just the D.C. Circuit, is this oral argument will be on, on um, actual um, trans, uh, be an actual transcript, but also they do it via audio, and it's available for the public without having to go through a whole process of uh, getting in contact with the uh, clerk or the court like the, like you have to do on the United States District Court. So, uh, uh, you know, it might take maybe a week or two before it's available, but I'll have the oral argument of this particular case in the Nicopira Labs case uh, posted onto this uh, website. Uh, website I posted onto this uh, YouTube channel um, as soon as it's available, and then you can listen to it. Normally, it's about an hour or two hours long. It might be shorter, depends on how many uh, questions um, the three judge panel has, and um, so that'd be interesting. So that'll be set for September eleventh, two thousand eighteen, and then it'll take a little time for uh, the court to decide, uh, you know, in regards to the case, they could, you know, they could come out with a decision within two weeks or they can take up to a year or more. Usually their average is six to eight months on, on a court of appeals level, but it depends on the docket. It depends on, um, you know, it really depends on any kind of maneuvering of the court. So, could be anybody's guess. Nobody really knows when it, when that decision comes out. I've heard rumors that uh, Nick Appear Labs' right to be smoke free coalition uh, intends to <clears throat> appeal the case to the U.S. Supreme Court. Uh, I've said this before: U.S. Supreme Court doesn't have to take the case, whereas Court of Appeals they do have to hear the case. Um, probably. We're going to lose in the Court of Appeals level. And the U.S. Supreme Court's just not going to hear the case. But whatever, right? I don't know. So I just want to share this a little bit with you. It really, uh, if you really listen to Gottlieb, uh, he's pretty open-minded, and he's trying to um, figure out ways to uh, help out the adult uh, vapor or even the adult smoker switching to an alternative that is less harmful for the person. And, you know, if Gottlieb had, had his way, he definitely would have written the FDA final rule completely different. And um, it would have definitely, definitely been a lot easier. Like, like he says, you know, he wants to, uh, let me find this real quick. Like it says right here, and this is pretty much where he's at. I mean, potentially less harmful products, including the wide diversity of ends and other novel tobacco products, 
must be put through an appropriate series of regulatory gates to fully evaluate the risks and maximize their potential benefits. And the key word to this is appropriate. What is appropriate? And that's, you know, all these studies and things of this nature will decide what exactly is appropriate. Maybe this whole, I mean, they're saying, the FDA even now is saying that the PMTA is set in stone. See if I could sort of find that for you. Look, for instance, right here. It says the, and this is, I mean, I, I spoke about this in, in the uh, video that I did on the appeal. <clears throat> and it says, despite these recent statements, FDA continues to take a hard line in the pending appeal where the agency argues and in regards to the PMTA, uh, the pre-market tobacco application process was statutorily required and did not authorize nor require FDA to modify those requirements for vapor products. So, it's interesting, you know, it's very interesting how the FDA does still choose, you know, picks and chooses what fights they will, you know, they will battle. You know, in other words, um, he tweaks, in other words, he won't enforce, so far he hasn't really enforced, um, against all these vapor products that have a manufactured finished product date after August day 2016. But yet, as far as the PMTA is concerned, he states that it's statutorily required and, and, and the FDA can't modify those requirements. So the PMTA is still going to remain in place. They even state that in their appeal to go over that uh, video that I uh, did. Um, and so it still is like a sticking point. Now, like he stated up here, I mean, Gottlieb, I, I mean, I, I truly respect the man uh, as far as him being an FDA commissioner, but he, it's, it's like, it's like, um, it's like he sidesteps the federal law uh, only on certain areas, and then other areas he says, well, it's statutorily required, and we can't change that. <laughs> it's crazy stuff. So this whole thing here is this appropriate series of regulatory gates, okay, to, to fully evaluate the risks and maximize their potential benefits. So one of the appropriate uh, regulatory gates is the PMTA. So regardless if he is pro uh, vapor products, according to the FDA, because of the, uh, in regards to the appeal with Nickel Pure Labs, these vapor products still need to go through the PMTA. But he, he's the type of man, type of person, to actually say, you know, well, we'll try to figure out a way around the PMTA. And he certainly has that power uh, to do so. Um, he's been sidestepping all these other federal laws uh, as far as the Tobacco Control Act, the FDA final rule, which is codified in the Tobacco Control Act. So why not skirt around the PMTA? You know, so, I mean, even though... I prefer Gottlieb uh, in his position rather than Caliph or having Mitch Zeller be completely in charge, the director of Center for Tobacco Products. Even though I understand that Gottlieb is really trying to do his very best here to keep these vapor products on the market for adults uh, in the USA, you still need to be a little wary of him. You still have to be careful with him. Because he's, you never know when he can change on you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's trying his best, but then at the same time, um, you know, 
like I said, you just have to be wary of them. You know, you have to be you have to be careful with him still. I'm still cautious with Gottlieb as far as him being the FDA commissioner. I I you know, you ought to you ought to be thankful that he's in that position rather than someone like Robert Kayla for someone else. But still you must use caution with him because he could flip flop on you at any time. And that's ultimately what I'm afraid of. Someday they're going to create a vaping product so you don't hear me suck on the product, you know? That's the only crazy thing about vaping. You ever notice is making that noise when you vape. Sometimes it's annoying, especially if you have like if they're having a live show or something and they're ha getting in, into a really deep discussion about something and then someone in the you know someone in the on the panel goes you just like to tell them, "Hey, stop vaping for a moment so that guy could finish his point." Anyway, I just want to share this with you. Just, you know, it's good that FDA Commissioner Gottlieb is open-minded and sees the potential of vapor products, and he wants to keep it out of the hands of those under the age of 18, all fine and good. But there is also the flip side to it, that he is still holding the PMTA over our heads. And as long as that is the case, then at any time, any date after August 8th of 2018 can come back and haunt us big time. So you just have to still be careful with Gottlieb, though I prefer him over all the other commissioners that they've had, especially since, uh, since uh, Robert Califf. Um, and definitely it's good to have him in place so he keeps the reins very tight on the director of the Center for Tobacco Products, Mitch Zeller. So I just want to share this little thing with you. I'll be back with another interesting article. See you guys in a moment.